Welcome back, dear viewers of Imam Hussain TV. Um, I hope you have a wonderful morning joining us this morning. Um, the daily du'as, as ever, beautiful. We were discussing the um, ziyara of Fatima al Zahra, salamu alayha, so I hope you benefited from that. I personally did. Um, and now we're going to be um, introducing and, and welcoming our next uh, special guest on The Specialist. Um, you may recognize him from our previous um, seasons, Brother Bilal Ali, um, which is a bit odd because now I'm going to be interviewing him and we're having a discussion um, about various topics um, relating to our everyday lives, things like stress, um, you know, managing things, um, and that's our particular topic today. But in the future um, days, we'll also be looking into other topics. So with that, salam alaikum, brother Ali. Salam, how are you doing? Sister? You okay? Alhamdulillah, good, thank you, brother. How are you doing? It's a pleasure to be here. A bit unusual in this seat, but um, yeah. all the same, it's good, it's good. It's good. Well, um, you know, we, I mean, when we used to film together as presenters, I know that you have a wealth of knowledge to do with um, you know, your background and obviously you can, you can explain perhaps to our viewers what you specialise in before we get into the topics. But it's nice to be able to hear your sort of input and expertise on topics such as stress and you know, we'll be going into things of how food affects us in the future mornings and other, other mm -hmm. very interesting mm -hmm. topics. So just briefly, what's your sort of background? I know a little stuff, not, not a wealth of knowledge, no pressure. But yeah, my background... Um, is in mental health so i am a psychotherapist and a trained counselor as well um, and i've practiced various psychological models of talking therapy but mainly what is a rational emotive behavior therapy but more commonly known as cbt a branch of cbt Excellent. and also existential talking therapy as okay well. so we'll be hopefully delving into that brain of yours and getting some information hopefully can help our Shut our up. viewers Shut um up. so today we're going to this morning we're going to be speaking about stress um it seems that it's something that um coherently is 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 impacting most of us in our daily lives we're becoming busier our lives are packed with activities and responsibilities and um and really the wind down of you know managing that stress or knowing how to manage it and even how to recognize stress mm -hmm. um, it's not something that we're you know it will come naturally to a lot of us so if I was to ask you how what is stress and how would you recognize what the symptoms are um, within yourself so what is stress uh, we could describe stress as not being able to cope or not coping in a healthy way in terms of our life responsibilities and our, our life duties and just in terms of our daily living. Okay. Uh, we, are, like, we have this table in front of us and it's um, bearing some beautiful fruit, um, which is of a weight that is okay for the table to sustain. Yeah. However, if we were to put um, objects of a heavier nature, a kettlebell, maybe 10 kilo kettlebell or 100 um, kilos of weight or something of that nature, it may start to bow, mm -hmm. may start to show the signs of stress of you know, towards cracking. And that's what happens to us as human beings, human beings. as an analogy that we we show the signs, but we don't bowl as a table does, but we can, we can also break, as we say, when, it's, when, it, when it stress is absolutely too much, you know, we have broken human beings um, in one respect, in terms of emotionally, psychologically, cognitively, you know, people do break or people show stress. Understandably, um, because again, we, we are expected to just cope, aren't we, and carry on with life's, you know... Demands. Uh, demands, yeah. and, and, and then at any time trauma can come into our life. So, how would somebody recognize um so that table you know it's such an obvious thing it would break mm -hmm. you know that would not counter the you know the additional weight on it but as human beings we're quite resilient and we can be quite resilient to understanding our own emotions and and how we portray stress so we mm -hmm. could even deny it to ourselves like no no i'm fine how would somebody be able to recognize in themselves that perhaps i need some help here or i need to understand what i'm going through okay so let's Go back a step. Let's use another metaphor, another analogy. Um, there's the, the idea of a stress cup that everybody has. And so there's, there's normal challenges, normal problems, normal responsibilities, like living um, conditions, if you will, depending on the type of lifestyle that we have. Some people have more triggers mm -hmm. or more events that could cause or lead um, somebody's stress cup to become that bit more full and that bit more full and that bit more full. Now, what we naturally have as human beings uh, religious people, people who are non-religious, but just as human beings in general, yeah. we have different ways that we relieve stress. Um, some are more questionable than others in terms of some people using, um, you know, various substances to relieve stress, which is, an, yeah. is, a, is, is another subject for the 21st century, which is a rise and which is causing more problems. But yeah. let's just think, 
of a Muslim person, for example, a religious person, that they may feel stressed. They may turn to the Book of Allah and uh, you know read particular passages from the Quran to, to try and um, ease their psychological state, ease, ease their heart, because we think of the Quran as a medicine. Um, some people may uh, exercise, some people may choose to share the, the negative experience they had with a loved one or, or, or you know, a trusted confidant. And then these type of practices um, reduce right. the stress in that cup. But what happens is sometimes people either don't find um, a, an effective outlet to reduce the, the, that thing that, that is filling the cup, and so it's the, almost or, a support network. Yes, yeah. exactly. That a coping mechanism, yeah. coping strategy, support network. Or sometimes the event is of that magnitude, a major life event that the person's stress cup may full up and overflow, and then they're unable to function um, cohesively. You know, they're unable to, to 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 live that productive life. In fact, they may um, go into, for want of a better term, like regressive or or or, or, or um, unproductive you know, kind of self. Okay, so you're saying that basically anything could happen at any point and when it's when the cup, almost another analogy is that mm -hmm. when the cup starts to over, starts to overflow, fill up and overflow. Yeah. That means that's a that sign of you not coping. We need to step back at that point and then just sort of see how we can recede that um, level of water, like sort of if the cup has water in it. What it is is about self-awareness. Yeah. Because the question is, do people... Uh, know their triggers yeah. do people know when they're not coping for example because okay. in uh, many cultures for example not to make everything about gender but no. in terms of masculinity as men we're taught throughout various cultures that you know the, regardless of the difficulties we suck it up we get on with it yeah and to risk to kind of acknowledge our vulnerability is a sign of weakness so we can sometimes go into denial so you find somebody having a major problem in their marriage stress cup gets a bit more full um, there's a major event at work, maybe the possibility of redundancy or having to, to take a post either far away, which means more travel, less time from the home, or at, at less pay, and we're already struggling or finding challenges financially. So then that fills the stress cup that bit more. What happens is that the person doesn't seek intervention and trust with somebody that they can offload this stress, for example, or find a healthy avenue if, for example, they decide to bottle it up and just get on with it but then they're at night, they're sleeping less or they're mm. experiencing broken sleep or instead of their normal between six and eight hours, which is recommended, for example, by the NHS, um, they start to sleep maybe two, three hours. But, you know, they barely fall asleep at night and by the time they fall asleep, it's time to get up or their sleep is continuously broken because they're ruminating and chewing over and mulling over these different stressful events and factors in their life. Now, that lack of sleep, there's nothing... <sighs> in terms of the top of the list in terms of what can unsettle a human being is like poor sleep pattern or lack of sleep so so poor sleep pattern is one a sign yeah. for many people yeah. i'm not sleeping well right but also it can be another cause of compounding the stress so it might not have been the original issue yes. but it can be that sign but also a, a, a trigger for more filling of the cup so to speak okay so that's one um recognizable you know, um, so, you know, effect of stress. Mm -hmm. What are the other things that are quite common that you come across in people? Common. That things that I, I, I come across in, in um, my practice, in my clinic is, for example, people um, having physical, prob physical pains or, or, or conditions, but they've been, for example, checked out by their, their, their medic, their GP, and there's no um, physical s uh, reason why they'll be for example, experiencing these type of back pains or type of yeah. shoulder pains mm. or things of that nature. So, so in terms of physical aches and pains, yeah. people can even get stomach ulcers right. in, in extreme cases but are, that are um, triggered by, yeah. by stress. Um, in extreme cases, loss of hair, wow. um, people, skin, poor skin, people break out in hives or, or, or yeah. you know, um, if they have, um, let's say, tender skin, what, a susceptible thing is, you know, I'm not sleeping when I've got these spots in my face or, mm. you know, um, not that they're breaking down in the no. extremist of sense, but these yeah. are like telltale signs yeah. that they are really, they're really under pressure. People can become um, low in mood, it can affect their self-esteem, um, irritability. Mm -hmm. So when probably most of us can recognise this if we look back in our life at times when we were 
we didn't maybe know it at the time, but we reckon, like, wow, I must have been pretty stressed because yeah. we would snap yeah. at things and, you know, react negatively. Yourself, and, yeah, yeah. Out of sorts. So because the cup is nearly full, yeah. it's a, uh, what do they say, the straw that broke the camel's yeah. back. So it's just the thing that so, normally yeah. the, the, the children usually come in and ask, can we yeah. watch a particular program or whatever? And you find yourself reacting yeah. with hostility to the children or, or snappy with your partner or the people yeah. closest to you customers if you work in the public sector whatever it is yeah. these are kind of signs that you know something under the surface is starting to come to the surface but there's there's probably an so issue that, going that's on. quite um so for instance you could you could have various you know like you're saying a stomach ulcer would be diagnosed by a specialist but in terms of you could feel the symptoms you could feel the aches and pains not understand yeah. the low mood um and that's quite worrying because that would impact your daily life wouldn't it on top of the worry that you already have yeah. that has triggered this these side effects but i think what's wor what's concerning about stress is that it can come in so many different ways can't it can it can um emerge in a person so if, for instance that was they're all pretty much physical ailments yeah. um that may not have a, a, a direct diagnosis like, as in you could have ibs you could have um a, 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 an ulcer, stomach is a, is a major place, a major though, place, major place yeah. Yeah. what about things like you know the impact on mental health or the fact that you know if it's impacted somebody and um and you know that mean like spiritually you know if their mood affects their faith for instance how mm -hmm. how would you say that do you see the examples like that as well in your opinion yeah i mean it, it can and it can work um two ways because for some people it's, the human being is such a subjective creature if i can put it that way mm. where um there are common things which we can see as common stressors um, a breakup of a, of, a, of marriage, um, a bereavement, um, loss of a job. You know, yeah. money. Money is a, a big stressor in, in, in the 21st century. Um, I say 21st century, probably in the 20th, 48th. Yeah. For you know, but in terms of resources, in terms of survival, in terms of maintaining your uh, station, yeah. you know, um, money is a, is, is a big issue. But um, essentially, um, you know. There are common stressors, but we're so subjective um, in terms of our interpretation of life, or because of the makeup, because of our, as you know our psychological makeup, how we've been brought up, the kind of life events that we've been exposed to, yeah. our ability to solve problems. Mm -hmm. um, so our kind of psychosocial resources in terms mm -hmm. of dealing with, with difficulties is, is quite subjective. But as I said, you know, money, relationships, bereavement, those They're are some the of the more common yeah. ones, you know. Just quickly, I think we've just got under a minute left, but what would you say to somebody who recognises some of the um, these ailments you've said and, you know, the, the signs, what would you recommend as a practitioner to, what would people say? Recommendation, if somebody's feeling stressed, um, I think that there are, one, there's articles on the, um, or, or there are apps available, there's information online in terms of for the more younger people who, in terms of yeah. there's apps to do yeah. with like things like mindfulness and coping with stress. Yeah. Um, for people who are not so, um, you know, app and, and yeah. um, electronic orientated, I'm saying that, you know, it's good to, to speak to somebody that you trust um, just as a confidant. If you feel like it's a bigger or a deeper issue, seek professional help in terms of maybe your GP could be one of your first ports of call. Okay. Um, to see if you can be referred for, say, talking therapy to, um, for counselling or even just self-help literature that's available as well okay. in terms of like books that you can go yeah. through various um, yeah. uh, things to, you know, coping mechanisms, exercise, watching what you eat, yeah. being particular about your sleep, taking time out. Um, to, to on, for rest and yeah. to, to, to internalize. I know that the, the, the salah is supposed to, yeah. in, in, ideally, it, it's supposed to provide that for us, but sometimes stress can knock us off of our deal. Yeah, you know? and it's so. okay, isn't it? Because even these um, remedies that you're saying, they're mm -hmm. part of you know, the help that we have you know, through th theories and evidence, and yeah. they are a part of that supportive network to get you back into your feet, and it's Absolutely. no harm. I'm more ashamed to actually um, approach those um, remedies. So, but thank you so much. I think we're about out of time now. Wow, that's um, quick. Always, it's, always it's a flipped. pleasure, though. Always a pleasure. No, thank right you now. so much. And I hope that um, the one lesson people do take away from what you've said and the remedies is that not to ignore the signs of stress and mm -hmm. to really deal with it before the cup is really overflowing and, For sure. and things get worse. So, inshallah, we'll see you another morning. Have a blessed day. Inshallah, thanks. And now we are going to go and see what Fahima and Sana are cooking in the kitchen.